Hi guys, this is Austin with The Recap. In today's video, I'm previewing both the Seattle Seahawks vs. San Francisco 49ers football game next Sunday and the Washington Huskies vs. the fight, Illinois Fighting Illini game. But first, I want to do the Gold Star and Dunce Award. This week's Gold Star goes to... Peyton Manning! Peyton Manning destroys on Thursday Night Football. My man had 27 completions for 462 yards and 7 touchdowns. He's the first quarterback to throw for 7 touchdowns in 44 years since Joe Cap did it in 1944. But my favorite part about watching Peyton Manning play is watching him in the pre-snap and when he's in the pocket. And I feel so passionate about it, I decided to do an impersonation of it. Say it! Say it! Say it! Ready? 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 Watch the D-line! Eagle! Eagle! Watch the backer! Watch the backer! Sam Blitz! Sam Blitz! Eagle! Eagle! Gumbo! Gumbo! Wait! Action! Green action! Green action audible! Green action audible! Bronco! Bronco! Say it! Say it! Hike! I'm back. I hope you guys like that impersonation. Now let's get on to the Dunce Award for the week. This week's Dunce Award goes to Danny Trevithan, the linebacker for the Denver Broncos. He had an interception. He had green fields ahead of him. He had the easy pick six. He ran into the end zone. He had the pick six. But he dropped the ball behind his back. And the interception counted, but it didn't count because then the ball got kicked out of bounds and it was a touchback. Poor Danny Trevithan. Poor, poor Danny Trevithan. And to make matters worse, it was Mr. Trevithan's first interception of his career and he blew it! Alright guys, now that that's out of the way, let's get right into the Seattle Seahawks versus the San Francisco 49ers coming up next weekend on Sunday Night Football. Alright, as you guys know, probably the Seahawks and 49ers both took care of business, business this week. The 49ers won at home 34-28 against the Green Bay Packers. And the Seahawks took care of business on the road, winning 12-7 against the Carolina Panthers. Let me start by saying, the Carolina Panthers are secretly really stingy. I didn't know their front seven was that good. Their secondary, eh, it's not that great. But their front seven was ridiculous. I was watching the game like, damn, the Seahawks better get the Seahawks better get a score. Like the Panthers are gonna mess around and win this game. The Seahawks are gonna let the Panthers mess around and win the football game in opening week. I was like, oh no. So Kaepernick against the Packers was 27 of 39, 412 yards and three touchdowns. But Anquan Bolden and Vernon Davis combined for 19 receptions, 306 yards, and all three of the touchdowns. Let me start by saying this. Anquan Bolden will not get 208 reception yards against the Seahawks because Seth is going to put Brother Sherm, Richard Sherman on him, and they'll just lock him down. He held uh, Steve Smith today to six receptions, 51 yards. I don't think he'll get Anquan Bolden to 51 yards, but somewhere between the 75 and 100 range. He will not have 208 receiving yards. That's ridiculous. And I think the Seahawks should probably stick a corner on Vernon Davis just because he's so fast, so light and quick that I think they're going to have to do that. And if I do that, I think they'll be able to shut down the uh, 49ers passing game. And I think that'll be a big thing for them. Russell Wilson was 25 of 33 for 320 yards today and, and a touchdown against the Carolina Panthers. And the Panthers were had him running for his life all game. And the Seattle Seahawks O-line must get better against the 49ers. Because while the 49ers secondary is not the same as it was last year, I was watching the game like, man, you can throw on the 49ers all of a sudden. Their front seven is still ridiculous. And they will put Russell Wilson on his back all game long if the Seahawks allow it. Both defenses played well. The 49ers played against a high-powered offense, and they still won the game, which is great. The Seahawks only gave up 7 points and 253 yards, including 125 yards through the air against a sneakily solid defense from the uh, offense from the Carolina pa Panthers. So that was nice to see. Nice to see the Seahawks hold up. They didn't give up a single point in the second half. And both teams predicate their offenses 
on the run, but neither team did well on the ground. Marshawn Lynch had 17 carries for 43 yards. Frank Gore had 21 carries for 44 yards. So both of these teams' workhorses got to get better. I don't think the 49ers are going to do as well, especially in Seattle. Seattle's going for a world record for sound and decibels. The Seahawks have got to keep playing the tenacious D. They can't let them do well again. 49ers do well. And my final score is Seattle 24, 49ers 20. That noise right there is halftime of this episode, and we need to continue to march on and get right into this Washington Huskies versus the Illinois Fighting Illini. So, for those of you who don't know, the, C the Huskies won last week against Boise State. And man, they put a smackdown on Boise State. They were like, mm. Mm. They beat them up. 38 to 6. Now they're ranked 19th in the AP poll. I'm hyped. The Huskies haven't been this good in a minute. I'm like, oh yeah, Huskies, we're about to do work. We're about to do work. Also, Severian Jenkins wasn't in the game. Keith Price was spreading the ball around. But then I remembered. It was just one game. It was on opening night in the new stadium. And the Huskies played out of their minds. Will the Huskies be able to bring their intensity in to Illinois. That is the major, major question for this game because, like I said, it was only one game and in the Sarkeesian era, the Huskies have just a terrible record when it's being ranked. They have not won a game. Last year, they were the 25th ranked team in the country when they played Wazoo and they got beat. It was so sad. It was so very sad. Although I will say, this Husky team looks a lot, lot better. Justin Wilcox is looking like he will probably be a head coach next year because he took a just atrocious defense. And all of a sudden, the Husky, the Husky defense looks like it's something serious. They didn't give up a single touchdown against the Boise State Broncos high-powered offense. I was like, oh my gosh. They only gave up 175 yards to the air, which is incredibly impressive. And they're going to have to do it again because they're going up against another solid quarterback in Nathan Shieldhouse of the Illinois Fighting Illini. He absolutely tore up Munchie Legault and the uh, Cincinnati Bearcats this weekend. He was, he was really quite dominant. He was 26 of 37 for 312 yards and four passing touchdowns. The Huskies cannot allow... Nathan Shieldhouse to get off this game. They cannot allow that man to do work like he did against the Cincinnati Bearcats. And Keith Price has got to continue to spread the ball around. As you saw in the game, Jadon Mickens emerged as a star. I said he would be a big player this year. He emerged as a star. And it was really nice to see that, especially with Austin Severian Jenkins back. They're going to have to step it up. They're going to have to play great once again. And honestly, I'm a little bit worried because... I don't know if the Huskies can do it again. I don't know if they can replicate that that intensity that they had against Boise State. And also, I've never really watched Illinois play. So when I saw that they beat a really tough Cincinnati team, 45-17, to 17, I was like, oh my, oh my gosh. Oh my, wow, Illinois is not a cupcake. After they, after they almost blew that game against South, uh, Southern Illinois, I was thinking, oh man, I'll have to go walk into Champaign, Illinois, pull them out the building real quick, come back to Seattle with 2-0 record, beat Idaho State, play Arizona with a 3-0 record. But now I'm like, okay, we can't overlook Illinois. We can't overlook Illinois quite yet. I think Keith Price, like I said, he's going to have to play great. Going to have to play great against Illinois. I don't think Illinois has a very, very good defense because they gave up 34 points to a pretty bad Southern Illinois team. But I think in the end of the day, the Huskies don't play as great of defense, but getting Austin Safran Jenkins back is absolutely huge for the team. Keith Price continues to spread the ball around, plays like he did his sophomore year, not like he did in his junior year. The high-tempo offense continues to do well for the offensive line because they don't have to block for as long. They continue to play well. And I think the Huskies walk out of Champaign with a 2-0 record, and they win the game 31-17. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys liked it. I tried to keep it short for you guys. I'm trying this new thing where I keep the video under 10 minutes. And next week I will be back with a, this Friday actually, I'll be back with a video 
giving my upset picks for the weekend in college football and the NFL, and also picking my breakout players in the NFL and CAA football. All right, guys, I hope you liked this video. This was Austin.